I actually like this PR601 Pure Reflections Black Sealer. It's a 1K. It doesn't use any kind of hardener or anything. It's just air dry, and it dries pretty quick. I've got Bondo showing through in several places on my body work spots, the hood and the quarter panel and the tailgate, so and the fender on the driver's side, so definitely need sealer to seal in that exposed Bondo. A good 1K sealer like this sprays nice and smooth, and then it sets up dry pretty quick within like 10 or 15 minutes, so I I'm perfectly happy with this sealer. Now this is going on fairly wet, but sealer does not need to be soaking wet. I don't like to spray anything soaking wet except maybe some clear coat, but I don't like to spray sealer soaking wet. I don't like to spray base coat soaking wet. That just gives much more opportunity for fish eyes Fish eyes and your clear coat is one thing, but you get fish eyes and sealer, or fish eyes and base coat, and it you know looks awful. And there's nothing much you can do about it. When you get a fish eye and clear coat, all you gotta do is dab a little clear in the fish eye, and when you sand it smooth, it'll be gone. You can't do that with base coat or sealer, especially base coat metallic. You try to dab something in a fish eye and uh, base coat it looks like a big blob of something in the paint now I get quite a few comments about starting from the top and spraying down or start from the bottom and spraying up it really doesn't make any difference if your pattern is good you can start wherever you want the suggestion was that one or the other would prevent runs and that's just absolutely not true you spray your paint evenly get your overlap correct and and your speed correct and you don't have to worry about runs no matter what direction you're spraying i got a lot of runs last year because i'm losing my vision and my depth perception is almost gone so i get too close with the gun a lot of times it's not that hard with this sealer or base coat because they're not putting out a lot of fog but when clear is going on and the fog is thick then I lose my bearings and spray over the same pass I just made or get too close with the gun and cause big runs it's not that I can't fix them but I don't want to have to fix them now I swear I'm not trying to spray the sealer all wet but it's going on pretty slick and I uh, am going to tack it before I spray the color on there so I am glad it's so smooth and when I do tack it I can feel that there's hardly any dirt in it your first coat of whatever you spray on your surface is what catches all the dirt now just look at this crap PMI finishes I think this is industrial paint for painting porta potties or something. I'm gonna mix it up right in a Homer bucket. Now this is what you call the glug glug method of mixing. There's a couple glugs of paint. Now we need to get over here and add us in a couple of glugs of, of reducer. I'm using urethane reducer even though it's acrylic enamel. It ain't gonna make no difference. Except the urethane reducer will make it dry a little faster, so that's good. Now get it all mixed together real good. Get the reducer mixed in with the paint and get the metallic all suspended in there real good. When you have metallic paint, you gotta stir it every time you're gonna fill up your cup with it, you gotta stir it. Now, my scientific testing here tells me. It's it's still a little thicker than I want for spraying it like base coat, so I'm going to put in another glug of reducer. Now, stir it again, see what it's looking like. Get it all blended and blended and blended. 
Okay, you don't want to start too hard. You'll be sloshing it all over the place. But you do want to get it uh, mixed up extra good. Yeah, it seems to be thin enough for my purposes now. Now my sealer is nice and silky smooth. I'm wiping it with sack rag. And I'm not feeling a lot of dirt, so I'm happy about that. My exhaust fan is pulling the air out and I got the door open there a little bit. I'd have it open more than that if it wasn't a chance of rain. And it did rain after I got finished painting the car, but it didn't rain while I was painting it. As I said before, the majority of any dirt you're gonna get is gonna be in the first coat of whatever you spray on there. So any dirt that was still left in nooks and crannies blows out with the paint gun pressure. Oddly enough, it doesn't blow out with high pressure, but paint gun will stir it up. And so it gets in the sealer, which is a thin coat, and the tack rag is able to break it off. That being said, I didn't feel hardly any dirt in this thing as I was wiping it down. So it uh, will have some dirt in it when it's done, but not much. Now take note that the floor is dry. We went to great trouble to move everything out of the shop, blow all that Bondo dust out of here and <clears throat> get it nice and clean. You saw me sand up the Bondo and stuff that's on the floor. Well, we blew the floor, took the car outside and blew it off outside. Then we pulled the car back in and blew the floor again then blew the car again. Well, I'll take it back. We blew the car again, then blew the floor again, then blew the car again, then wiped it down with cleaner and a tack rag before spraying that sealer. Now I've tacked the sealer and I'm spraying the uh, crappy color. The name of the color on the can was medium suede, but I will call it maybe call it uh, mediocre poo. I am not a fan of medium suede, but that's neither here nor there. The man that owns the car likes the color, so that's what he's getting on it. And I don't have any uh, desire to paint it some cool color or something like that because I did the fastest uh, half-assed body of work I could do on it just to get it done. And, you know, I did the body work to last. I put fibro light and real low spots and, and stuff and uh, didn't put the Bondo on too thick, so it will last, but I didn't go to any great lengths to make this a nice car. It's going to be a decent car. You'll see when I do a walk around on it that the parts that I didn't do body work to are all lumpy and wavy and stuff. Now this isn't base coat, so I don't know if it's gonna work out in the end, but I'm spraying it with a 90% overlap, just like I do on a base coat with fine metallic in it. This is not a light color, so it's not quite as critical as a, a light color, but I don't know, we'll see what happens. The, the clear may make this acrylic enamel blotch up. Could cause all kinds of trouble. I, I didn't want to do it this way, but there, it would have been difficult to get the color because it was originally painted with that same implement paint or whatever that crap is. I forgot to do the door, so I'm going back to it. I put the cart before the horse and sprayed the fender before I spread the door. Now this is Oklahoma and it's mighty windy today and gusts of wind keep blowing in the door but the humidity is pretty high and so there's not a lot of dust in the air or at least I don't think there is judging by what I picked up with the tack rag and wiping the sealer there doesn't seem to be much dust coming through. 
but like I was telling you before, when we blew the floor like three times and cleaned it up real good, so there's no need to put water down on your floor when you're painting a car. If you got the floor clean, then there's no need for water on it. You know, the dirt flying through the air is not going to uh, only land on your floor. If there's dirt coming in the in the air, it's going to land on the car. It's not going to land on the floor. And if it does land on the floor, well, that's where it's going to stay. You won't be kicking dirt up if your floor is clean. And I can lead some of you people to, to smarts, but I can't make you think. Maybe if you were painting on a dirt floor, you'd have dirt kicking up off your floor. Of course, if you wet your dirt floor, you're gonna have a mud floor. I don't think that'd be working out real good. But in 1978, 79, one of those two years, I had been wetting the floor and I'd painted a few cars and I'm coming around the corner of the car and my air hose flops over and, and splashes water all over the fender and ruined it. I had to repaint the whole side of the car because I was afraid the color wouldn't match on the fender. And we didn't have clear coat and stuff like that back then. And I decided never again would I put water on the floor and I never wet the floor. And I don't have a problem with dirt because I know 100% how to blow the car properly and know that if you get the floor clean, you ain't got to worry about dirt coming off the floor. I only use water for color sanding of the clear coat. Speaking of that, this is the High Tech 7000 multi-purpose clear, and we accidentally got the fast activator. I didn't want fast activator, but that's what I got. And I've cleaned out the homer bucket that I mixed the suede in. Now I'm going to mix my clear in it. I don't have time to stop and, you know, mix four to one mix in the little cup. So I do it like this. I'm painting the whole car, so I'm going to mix up a lot. So I fill it all the way to the top with the activator. And pour it in the bucket. And I'll do the same thing four times with the clear. Since it's four to one clear, it needs four parts clear and one part activator. So it's got the one part activator in there. I'll open up this here childproof lid. A lot of times these dang pull out things, the little ring will break off and then you have to poke it with your needle nose and pull it out of there this time it came out so I'm gonna fill this up four times pour it in there and now one thing I should warn you about when you do this is don't get distracted don't lose count of how many you have put in there this glug glug method doesn't work with this stuff you need to be at four to one or real close to it This clear kit, the clear and the hardener, was only 50 bucks. You can see how thin it is. It's like water thin. And I would uh, much rather use the uh, FC740 that I used on the Lexus that I painted a couple months ago. Because it is a little bit uh, thicker and has some body to it, even though it's still not like a high solid clear it's thicker than this stuff this is low solid clear now the way i was pouring it in there i just need to stir it up a little bit just to make sure it's all blended good now i'm using the same r500 lvlp from vivor that had the 1.3 1.4 and 1.8 tips and i switched from the 1.8 that i was using for the sealer and the uh, acrylic enamel to this 1.4 that I'm going to use for this clear. 
I'm setting my pressure at, at uh, the top of the RP spectrum, which is about 30 PSI. Now, I'm not knowing what's going to happen when I spray this clear on this acrylic enamel. Now, the acrylic enamel is dry to the touch, but it, you know, probably still wet all the way down to the to the sealer so this clear has the potential of moving the metallic around but then again i sprayed it at a tight overlap like 90 percent so that it wouldn't have a bunch of metallic to move around that's why i don't like doing drop coats where you you know back the gun away from the car and blow it on there dry on top of what you wet wet base coat that you've already sprayed i don't like to do that i spray with a 90 percent overlap where i don't need a drop coat that way when you clear it there's you know no chance of it making your drop coat sink in and, and see blotches and stuff again this coat that i'm putting on is the what i call the fish eye coat you know, it's dry and it will keep it from fish eyeing and sometimes it still can fish eye but if you do this then you're you know, much less likely to have fish eyes than if you don't now it's a standard chance of making your job a little more orange peely but unless you want to put fish eye eliminator in your clear which I actually like to use fish eye eliminator but I just didn't have any. But this uh, tacky coat, I guess we can call it, works for eliminating fish eyes too. I sure wish I had base coat for this thing because the uh, acrylic enamel, the way I sprayed it, was I knew it was going to be orange peely you know, in the clear and everything else. I'm not talking about the clear, I'm talking about the uh, acrylic enamel color. It kind of looked like crap before I cleared it. And then it's making my clear coat look half crappy compared to over base coat. But there's no use crying over spilt milk. Just need to run with what you brung and hope for the best. I'm going to quit talking now because I'm uh, fixing to come up with the uh, clear and start spraying get it on there good and wet I'm going to spray two coats at once I'm going to spray the first coat on the panel and then I'm going to spray the second coat on it right after this clear is way too dry looking it's got a, a poor DOI distinctness of image but anyway, here we go with the uh, real clear coat. I've never used this clear before. I'll probably never use it again. It's like a, a speed clear or something with that fast activator. I'm having to put two coats on wet on wet just to get it to shine right. And it still doesn't shine that right. And I fear that the amount of clear I'm having to dump on there all at once is gonna move the metallic around in this cheap crap acrylic enamel but I'll just do what I can with what I got imperfections are definitely not an issue on this one the parts that I didn't do body work on are awful I only did body work where the bondo was cracking out and and it need to be uh, stripped down to the metal and redone because, you know, it was probably rusting or getting ready to rust underneath all of it. This bedside looked like maybe somebody backed into it and the, it was one of those big old heavy 70s bumpers and caved it in right there at the back of the wheel opening, a little bit behind it. It was caved in bad all the way from that lower body line up to the top, which made it pretty difficult to 
restore that upper body line to look even halfway decent because it had big kinks right through the middle of it. We tried to pull them out the best we could. Ben and uh, Chad had used the GD90 dent puller and pulled as much of it up as they could, but it was really bad. Our previous body man had just put Bondo two inches thick. I mean, it was ridiculous. But then again, his Bondo was cracking even where it wasn't thick, so he just was all around an awful body man. This not getting any rest in between coats is hard on old Billy. Uh, put one coat on, now I'm putting the second coat right on top of it, slow, just to get it to shine. There's a clear called Motor City Clear that sprays the same way, just absolutely doesn't want to shine. You have to soak it to get it to look halfway decent. I hate that kind of clear, which means I hate this kind of clear. You won't be seeing me using it again. Up next, we'll be shooting the FC740 clear on the 72 Grand Torino. I love that clear. It lays down nice and slick. When we get our paint booth set up, all finished out and operational, that's the clear I'll be using as a standard because it's going to look good out of the gun and don't have to worry about all the dirt chunks in it. I do have dirt in this clear, but you, know, you can see I got the door open back there and got an exhaust fan pulling air through the shop. And this paint job has not that much dirt in it. It's got some. I mean, it's not covered in dirt, but it does have some. But uh, that's what you expect when you're painting with the door open and the fan blowing. But once again, you don't need to put water on your floor to keep dirt out of your paint because it ain't going to help. The dirt ain't coming off the floor. The dirt is in the air everywhere. It doesn't matter whether you're painting a car or walking down the street or you know working in the shop, whatever. There's dirt flying around in the air. And if you can force all the air coming into the shop through a 5 micron filter, then you don't have dirt in your air anymore. And don't you all worry. I'll be showing you that this summer, how to get rid of dirt in your air. And then when I paint a car, I won't have all these clowns talking about, oh, you got a ton of trash in that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Morons. I don't like painting with a mirror on the car, but these uh, mirrors, well, this one doesn't, but the other one has the uh, cable on it, and I'm not going to be pulling mirrors and stuff off a uh, paint job that's so cheap as this one. Actually, not going to pull much of anything off a cheap car like this. Now, you'd think I'd get runs going this slow with clear, but I don't know the kind of clear it is with fast hardener. It, it's pretty hard to run this stuff. You know, I wouldn't be able to see them. I mean, we'll have to check it out and see if I got any runs on it. When we look at it in the light of day, then we can see if the metallic's blotchy and and tiger stripes and all that, which I got a lot of idiots saying that too. And I'm not saying it doesn't have tiger stripes. I don't know. But I don't think it does, even though it is cheap crap acrylic enamel with old school metallic in it. I sure wish it had been base coat because that would have made life a lot easier. Although this clear would have still made life hard. How do I get myself into these things? Now check the plastic blowing around on the Riviera right next door there and you'll understand how I could get some dirt in my paint. But I told you I didn't get very much dirt in the paint because I know how to get things clean before I paint them. And y'all, uh, water sprites, you can 
tell me about putting water all over the floor if you want to, but uh, that's irrelevant. Putting water on the floor is not going to stop any dirt from getting in your paint job. So uh, I'll prove that to you whenever we get the paint booth thing set up. Do paint booths, do they put water on the floor and in a nice downdraft paint booth? No, they don't. Water on the floor is an unnecessary step that might end up causing you trouble, like I was talking about. Hose flopping over and splashing water on the bottom of your paint job. It's just all around bad. Now I have to get down on my knees so I can get down there and see what the shine looks like. And I sure wouldn't want to be crawling around a bunch of water. You know, I've been uh, squatting down and doing bondo work, working on the sides of cars for 48 years, and I don't know why my knees don't hurt, but they don't hurt. Now, my feet do hurt from bending my toes like that while I'm squatted down there painting or doing body work, but my knees don't give me any grief. I have worn knee pads before, but not for very long. And uh, I don't like it when I'm moving around on my knees like that and get a, a rock or a chunk of bondo on the floor or something right under my knee. That doesn't feel good, but that's a short-lived pain, so just one of those things. I'm pretty sure my eyes are going to wear out before my knees do, so I won't have to worry about it too much. Now this... Uh, paint here in the video clear looks shiny well, it is shiny but it's terribly orange feely because of the terrible texture of the acrylic enamel sprayed dry to be like base coat if I sprayed that acrylic enamel wet I wouldn't be able to clear coat till the next day probably and I sure didn't want to do that but I also didn't want to have to double coat it but there's a whole lot of things I didn't want to do on this car and have to do anyway. Now the paint light, or paint gun light, is helping me quite a bit. I can tell by the size of the circle on it, you know, that I'm at a reasonable distance from the surface. I like to paint close. I don't want to get too close, but I also don't want to get too far because the getting too far off the surface causes orange peel too so don't want to do that painting this El Camino is really making me look forward to painting the uh, Gran Torino because I have good materials for that job and it'll be a joy to spray it after this mess now, I'm not even saying that this car doesn't need to be repainted I don't know what it's going to look like out in the sun if it has blotchy metallics and stuff like that, then I'm going to sand it and reshoot it with some base coat. We'll just have to shoot it with one of those color eye cameras and get the uh, base coat mixture to where we can paint it right. I did not want to spray it with that acrylic enamel, but that was what was on it, like a uh, color that didn't have a paint coat or anything like that. It was just from that implement paint company and and uh, no telling what it is. If I had a mixing bank handy right here, I could recreate the color pretty much from scratch. Although I uh, can't see very good to see color anymore, I, I can still do it. It just takes me a lot longer and a lot more checking and rechecking to get the color right. Anyway, I won't have to worry about this car for too much longer. Even if I do have to repaint it, it'll just be a matter of running DA over it with some 800 and shooting a little bit of base coat on it and, and re-clearing it. And it'll be mighty fine. Everybody knows that the second time you paint a car, it's a lot slicker than the first time because paint is an excellent primer to have a nice smooth finish laid on top of. And y'all saw what kind of uh, finish was on this 
before I sprayed it, the original paint, which was the same crap, and the uh, lacquer primer with Bondo spots poking through it and stuff, so I didn't have a real good finish to spray on top of. But we do what we can with what we have to work with, no matter how little it is that we have to work with. And you know old Billy's got a can-do attitude. Because I'm an American, not an American. And I never give up and never surrender. And I won't stop till I get enough. Actually, this car didn't turn out too bad for the just totally crap materials I'm using. So imagine what you can accomplish using some good stuff on your own car. I promise it'll work out a whole lot easier for you. So y'all, please touch my like thingy and share my shizzle. And subscribe, damn it!